Hey, good morning, YouTube. It's Jeffrey Howells, Carpet Cleaning. We are out in Clackamas doing a bit of professional commercial carpet cleaning here at this church. We've got it broken down into three phases. So this is going to be the first phase that we're going to be doing today. We go through and uh, get this room all cleaned up using the commercial magic. We are going to pre-scrub using a red pad on a 175. Give it a good scrubbing and then uh, dwell time and then we're going to extract it with our powerful truck mounted steam cleaning. Um, but we're also probably going to lift these vents out. I see that there's a series of one, two, three. There's a vent there. There's another run of three over there. I'm going to pull those out just so that um, you know I don't want to get our pad you know caught up on that and rip and tear and also i don't want there to be any risk or chance of um, rust transfer with damp carpeting so we're going to pull those up out of there i'm looking around i don't really see any coffee um typically you know a lot of a lot of churches this is an area where there could be a lot of coffee spill so i think just to be safe i'm going to put peroxide in with the uh the cleaning solution um, however, I really don't see anything that suggests that there's any coffee spillage really going on in here. And then we're also going to get up on the stage and we'll give this a quick go, you know, because it's, it's pretty ratty looking. But we're going to have this place looking 100% better. It's going to be pretty awesome. And then um, these carpeting, this carpeting has not been, you know, any professional cleaning in the past 10 years so um out here in the hallway this was going to be part of stage two but i think that um if i've got re a, any uh time left over from getting this done because i think i probably over you know, overestimated what it's going to take to clean this just to get the three phases in, in place and ready to go I'm going to take any extra time that I have and begin cleaning this hallway. In fact, I will probably begin our work in the hallway, possibly on this end here. And then all the adjacent classrooms and everything that are attached to the hallway will be part of uh, phase two. And then downstairs will be phase three, but we'll get to that when we get to that another day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make up some uh, product and begin our scrub process. All right, so this is the chemistry that we're going to be using today. I've got peroxide, which is a detonator on the left, a vacuum product. And again, on the right is another vacuum product called Commercial Magic. Um, so this works very good on uh, synthetic carpeting. It just breaks the water tension and helps to... Uh, it does a lot of the stuff that... Uh, an encapsul well, it is an encapsulation solution, but it does a lot of the stuff of what like an olefin carpet cleaner would do. Um, because synthetic carpets like to hold on to grease and things, and they like to resist water. So you need to do something you know, to chemistry-wise to, to offset that so that the water is able to actually penetrate the, the the carpet fibers better and the way that's done is through magic okay so without a, a chemistry lesson they're just just accept the fact that there's magic going on um so what we're going to do for those of you who are curious as to uh, my dilution ratios i use two ounces of the commercial magic per gallon of water and then I also use four ounces of the peroxide per gallon of water. So because I'm making up a two gallon jug here, hot water helps to dissolve the stuff. Um, four ounces, eight ounces. And what I use, the Commercial Magic is a very thick, globby, gooey product. It doesn't come out like peroxide where it's very liquefied and easy to measure. So, what I do is I use a measuring cup like what's in the sink there. I put in about maybe 10 ounces of water so it's easy to calculate. And then I start adding these, these globs of commercial magic that go glub, glub, glub out of the, the bottle. 
until I the water level raises up to 14 ounces and then I know that I have four ounces of the product in the, the measuring container and then um, well today <laughs> I should probably carry uh, something to mix with but I was just using a screwdriver from my toolbox to uh, mix the product in the measuring cup and then added it to the hot water in the jug and it pretty much dissolved it so um, I'll probably shake that jug up a bit and let it sit for a few minutes just to dissolve before we get started as we are setting up the extension cords and stuff for the 175. Alright, so uh, time wise it's taken us about an hour and a half to go ahead and scrub everything up on the stage and all that so we got the uh the steps scrubbed pretty good we just lift our 175 up there and got the steps stairways and the surfaces of the step or the, the the stage is all scrubbed and ready to go and all of the surface area down here was scrubbed and ready to go with our commercial magic it looks really good so it's dwelling in the carpeting as we speak right now so what I'm going to go ahead and do is fire up our truck, bring our lines in, and begin the steam cleaning process. And what that will do is just give these carpets a good rinse and pull out any uh, sediments and things that have accumulated in here over the past 10 years. Now, um, we are using encapsulation solution. Encapsulation solutions, generally what they do is they, they use a method of uh, chemistry of crystallization so um, what it does is that it basically forms crystal crystallization around all of the debris it breaks the, the debris the solution break just like soap releases the uh, debris from the carpet fibers so that's why when you are in an area and you're vacuuming vacuuming and the carpet still look dirty you're pulling up dirt but you also have a lot of dirt and debris that's just permanently attached to carpet fibers like velcro and in that situation um, the only thing that you can do is a, a professional steam cleaning or uh, a bonnet cleaning even in certain situations would work because the chemistry of the cleaning solution between the uh, hot water extraction solution and very low moisture uh, or encapsulation solutions basically work the exact same way as far as breaking um, attached debris that are um, stuck to carpet fibers like velcro it breaks them loose however with encapsulation solution it puts a crystallization around them it breaks it loose from the fibers and then crystallization film surrounding the debris so that they do not reattach to the carpets and at that point um, when it's all completely said and done and dry you can go ahead and just vacuum all that stuff up with a powerful vacuum um, however, you run into problems because um, most residential areas, they do not have powerful vacuums. In fact, I would say 75% of them are broken or don't work or properly maintained. Um, in most cases, in my opinion, a top-of-the-line Walmart special vacuum cleaner is basically no good except for uh, picking up Cheerios off the carpet. So... Um, that's just, unfortunately that's just the way that the consumer market has gone everything has gone from from quality to cheap and um, you know when you're dealing with overseas marketing and all that basically we're flooding the market with garbage and um, the consumers aren't even aware that they're they're being sold trash so basically you live your life as a slave making money and buying recycled garbage from other countries so um, that is pretty much the case. So unless you actually have like a $3,000 vacuum cleaner or something that has actually adequate suction and all that, um, half the debris or you know maybe even 60, 75% of the debris that's buried deep within the carpet fibers are, is not sufficiently getting extracted from the carpets during a uh, most carpet cleaning or most vacuumings. And what that means is that that abrasive uh, accumulation that is in the carpets will eventually permanently damage and destroy carpet fibers by uh, scratching them as they get walked upon. So that's why we do this process. Um, I like the uh, 
encapsulation solutions um, specifically because of their uh, neutralizing and pH balancing properties and all that and stripping everything loose. But I also like running the truck over and doing a steam cleaning just to uh, pick all that stuff up off the carpet so you're not having to rely upon a vacuum. And in my opinion, those the combination of the two do a far superior job. So um, that's kind of what I, pretty much what I refer to as hybrid carpet cleaning because you're taking both um, carpet cleaning uh, methodologies, the VLM and the HWE, and you're combining them together to create an ultimate uh, carpet cleaning experience for the customer. And you're doing the best job that you can possibly do at that point. Got the truck fired up, the hose is running in, and the mercury is beginning to rise. So what we're going to do is just let it uh, continue. The older uh, units, like my own, <laughs> require that there needs to be somewhat of a load on the machine in order to uh, crank the heat up to get it heated up faster. So we always plug the air intake. It also increases our fuel usage, but that's fine. You know, we're just trying to get the, the water heated up. Once it's heated up, it will adequately maintain the temperature. But until then, we're just going to give it like five minutes, five, ten minutes, take a break, and just let the water begin to heat up for us. Hey, I've gone ahead and I've powered down the truck. I'm going to go get something to eat. But what we did is we completed that whole back cove there, you know, where it comes out from the wall all the way back to that back door. So pretty much from the green corner of that step there, all the way across to the wall, those are pretty well lined up. We, we got that whole area. We went ahead and we scrubbed and extracted the entire stage. Um, there was quite a bit of black up here. Um, I couldn't really tell if it was coffee or if it was um, oil like anointing oil that they use when they pray and stuff it may have been some spilled oil um i did put i will get some other stuff to try to uh, leach more of that coloring or grease or oil or whatever that is out of there um i did dump a little bit of commercial magic on there just so that you know a little pool of it would puddle up on there and then i extracted it off and it did a pretty good job um, however, there is still a little bit more discoloration that is still visible there. It sort of looks like a, almost like coffee even. So we might try just some um, higher strength peroxide, like full strength and see what that does. Um, but we went ahead, we did the steps. Um, I was able to get the sides as much as I possibly could. Um, and everything up there looks really good. And then we completed this entire half of this the sanctuary in here. So when we get back from lunch, all we're going to have is the center walkway area. And then this side up to the corner of the wall going sh straight across there. So um, we're almost there. I'd say we're good. 85% of the way there. We just got a little bit more to go and then we'll take a look to see what more of uh, possibly phase two we can go ahead and just get started. But other than that, I am very happy with the way this turned out. I didn't really, I think I only saw like one or two coffee spills on um, this carpeting because of the coloring actually would hide it very well. So there was only a couple that I could actually see, but I've been looking for them. But you can see that the it's very, I mean, after that commercial magic, it's very kind of a brilliant, bright, shiny, new-looking carpets. And the stage looks really good, too. Um, that turned out really well. This, this type of frisé carpet always looks really good after it's been um you know sometimes you can you can scrub it sometimes it's very loose on the floor and you can't scrub it because it's very prone to ripping and tearing a hole um but this stuff is pretty thick and it's on there really good so this got a, a scrub and then it got a uh, a steam cleaning 
and it looks beautiful up here. So that dark, nasty spot that was up here, what I ended up doing is I took some of the evacuated spot and boosts, which I very rarely find a, a decent use for it. And I actually saturated the area and let it dwell there for a minute couple minutes and then I went ahead with the uh, give it a extraction and lo and behold it pulled all of that nasty black stuff out of there um, don't know what that black stuff was don't know if it was coffee or again like I said pointing out the anointment oil that they have up there maybe it was oil I have absolutely no idea um, I did take a terry cloth rag and I did see some transfer. So when I saw the transfer, I was like, okay, I'm just going to douse this area and then give it a rinse in it. Because I didn't want to like transfer it all out. It would take too long. So pretty much did it the expedient way just by uh, getting that uh, spot and boost in there and then extracting it out and used a lot of water, a lot of hot water, steaming all over the place and it did a really nice job. All right, the entire sanctuary in here has been uh, scrubbed with the commercial magic and it has been extracted using hot water. Hot water extraction, steam cleaning, whatever you want to call it, same thing. Um, came through here and we cleaned everything up. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, the vents I took off, they are one, two, three or four of them are sitting up there and the other half of them are sitting over there. Um, they were on the floors there and that was just to prevent um, ripping my my scrub pad to pieces as well as preventing any rust transfer from damp carpeting from getting onto the, the carpets as well so these will be dry in the morning in fact this side which we've started earlier is already almost dry by tonight it'll probably be absolutely fine to start putting stuff back or just put them back whenever they get put back so the chairs referring to the chairs but other than that everything looks awesome what we're gonna do right now since phase one is completed we're probably gonna begin um, a little bit of pre-scrub on phase two just to get that that scrubbing action in and then we will call the night and we will actually come back again tomorrow to uh, commence more with phase two and there'll be a little bit of evaluation as far as what rooms we're actually going to do um it's kind of up in the air right now because um some of them are are being used and have a lot of supplies in them which we are not going to be able to get to but we can get to some of them so once we figure out that information then we will commence tomorrow morning and continue on with phase two in the meantime, like I said, I'm going to um, begin pre-scrub with phase two. I'm going to take the rest of our solution. I believe I can easily do this section here, which should be fine. And then that doesn't leave a whole lot left in phase two to do tomorrow. It would be this area in here and then um, possibly three or four rooms so uh yeah we'll go from there <laughs> 